there was actually uh, some some cool experimental things that we had to do uh, where where the mill was involved, and then that all came together to to make the table, and it uh, it turned into a beautiful piece because of all of the figuring and the the, the work that went into it. Hi, my name is Rod, and I'm with Mountain Makers. Uh, this is my channel, and I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a software developer by training, software engineering, that kind of thing was what I did in the past. And we built a barn, uh, it was a family project. Uh, I started taking over the barn and bringing in more tools, and the tools started taking over. And then um, just before the pandemic is when we bought our woodland mills, uh, HM126. And uh, eventually we, we kind of built a relationship with a local resort here that needed some, some, some custom products. Eventually we found ourselves uh, becoming small product makers. As far as the furniture goes, uh, some of our recent posts, uh, we, we've been uh, asked to, to make different pieces of furniture from tabletops to, to unique things. There's, a, there's an art gallery that we work with here in town that was that's opening up they just have they have a new construction a new building that's going to, to have a gallery for showcasing art and we made a table for them that's one of our recent posts it, it, that's what we find uh cool and, and and fun about about working with uh you know having these collaborated uh projects is that they'll have ideas we'll have ideas we kind of come together and uh we we make them and that's that's what keeps us going and uh just that that constant creative collaboration with different people is is very enjoyable. Yeah, it's a it's a modern take on some different styles. And the way that the way that project happened was the it was for the artist that I mentioned for her for her gallery. It's it's a kind of a centerpiece in her gallery at the moment. She's going to put uh, some of her artwork on top of that. She makes uh, see these cool uh, gourd basket with different baskets and things that she's going to set on it and it's funny because she said that you know she doesn't want to put anything now that she's seen it because she you know of all the figuring and the wood grain that was on there uh she, she just she doesn't want to put anything on the table but in any case the it came to us from her the wood actually came from her property when she built her building for her gallery and actually her home, which part of it is is a gallery and a studio where she's going to give art classes and, and things like that. She had a couple of, or a few trees. She had some maple, some walnut, uh, uh, primarily on the property that were cut down and milled up. So we started with the maple slabs, which were air dried for just, uh, just over a year. And um, in that, there was actually uh, some some cool experimental things that we had to do uh, where where the mill was involved. They were two inch slabs, but because they were only air dried, uh, or because they were air dried, and because of the the high you know the amount of figuring in them and just different you know just just wood being what it is, uh, they were even though they were thick, they were twisted. So the first thing that we had to do was to uh, to flatten them. And so I had to find a way to flatten the slabs because I couldn't use the tradition, you know, the, I didn't have a big enough uh, router sled and, uh, or big enough area to, to be able to do that. And uh, the design actually came from her. She, she had some ideas. She showed us some, some, some pictures of things she liked. And so we came up with that, uh, that interlocking geometric table. Well, with the table legs, the, the top is basically uh, a panel made up from her slabs. So what we did, uh, I had this thought to put the slabs onto the sawmill bed because that was the largest and flattest thing that I had. So my first idea was to take the slab, put it on the sawmill, and then use the sawmill blade to kind of shave off uh, the surface to eventually get it flat so that I could flip it over and run it through the planer. And that was the first pass, and that worked. Um, and then I had the idea, uh, since I have a, a router sled, a, a, you know, a typical router sled that slides along um, a table and you run the, the router back and forth to slowly to get, it, to, to get it flat, I figured, hey, let me try putting my router, kind of retrofitting my, my router sled onto the gantry and um, flattening it that way. And so I kind of hacked that together. That also worked. Actually, I did the remaining slabs using that method and uh, planed everything, put the table together, and it worked out great. So it 
was an unconventional use of the mill, but it turned into a really cool discovery as far as, you know, being able to use it, you know, use it more in different ways. The table legs were actually built from the same material. You know, they were milled. And I also have some posts on that where I, I, I put the slab sideways so I could get the, the legs that I needed. And I milled the, the, the leg pieces from there and then threw them into the production process where I would plane them straight, you know, and, and create the joinery to make the, the mitered uh, square and rectangular legs that, that fit together. And then that all came together to, to make the table and it, uh, it turned into a beautiful piece because of all of the figuring and the, the, the work that went into it. There was uh, quite a bit of uh, prep work too. What came with the figuring was a lot of knot holes and defects and you know, the tree wasn't very healthy. And a lot of times you look at, you know, most people will look at that and say, well, you can't really use it. But um, what's nice is my wife is uh, has gotten to be the epoxy expert in the family. And so she used those skills to, to prep the table, to fill in all the knot holes and to make it a nice solid panel. Um, that comp, you know, and, and, and the epoxy complements the, uh, the figuring. The client, the artist is, is, is extremely happy. And so we actually have another table that's on the, on the docket. I don't have the, the design yet, but she wants some, it's going to be for her dining room. And um, we're going to be discussing the design or finalizing the design soon for that. It's been, it's been, you know, an enjoyable process working with this particular uh, client on these projects because she's, she's allowed us to just, just go crazy to be creative on it and come up with, uh, you know, she gives us the, the direction, but she, she, she's, she basically lets, uh, lets me riff on, on different ideas. She'll throw up, you know, throw it over to her. She'll, you know, she'll say yay or nay. And then, you know, we'll just uh, get into it. As far as the design process goes, what makes it even more, um, I guess, uh, gets, gets the process flowing really well is that I'm able to prototype a lot of the designs in 3D um, on, uh, on the computer. And I made up uh, the model with the with the design. She looked at it. You know, she could she could preview it and rotate it around and take a take a full look at it. And then I, I went with that. So uh, interestingly, that's that's how I prototype a lot of different things. Like we'll make signs. You know, you you uh, I'll put the sign design up there, uh, a piece of whatever, uh, uh, a little product. I'll design it there and I will either make it the traditional way or what's cool is I can feed it into the CNC and make all or part of that product uh, using you know that technology. So it's uh, in our shop, basically any technology that helps us um, you know accomplish what we need to is you know is, is welcome. I mentioned my, my, my previous background. I came from you know from from the, the IT side of things uh, as a computer developer. I also uh, have a uh, marketing company down in Florida, which uh, you know I still run remotely, and we do things like that, like with 3D and video, and so that's kind of bled into into my personal life. So it's it's hard to avoid being a, you know being kind of associated with uh, things like 3D design and websites and and all that stuff but uh and i'm trying to to keep focused on, <laughs> on on the woodworking i'll throw out a teaser there because i kind of alluded to it but i'd not you know it's not something that i want to really announce but we're working um the the timber frame project i, I mentioned is something we're, we're building uh a kind of uh we're building a house <laughs> and i've always wanted to do uh, timber framing and now that i have the mill a bit more experience and i practice with a few few, few different things i want to be ambitious about it and uh, that's something my wife and i've been talking about well i think uh, the best advice i can give and it's just from experience is to play and to play often because you never know what it's going to turn into and that's kind of what happened to us during the the lockdown uh, we got the opportunity to just just go wild on different ideas we tried different things we experimented it was my first time with the cnc and uh you know, I wasn't, you know, just try not to be afraid of making mistakes at that stage. You've got to, you, you, I think you learn best when you try something and it, it, it doesn't necessarily work, but you figure out how to make it work or how to make it better. I think that's kind of, that, that's very useful for just any project in general, because just knowing how to, to adapt to, to changes and to, to come up with solutions on the fly or, you know, as you need to, is an important part of, of any woodworking process.